Officials in Minnesota can boast of a high quality drinking water supply in a time where many people are questioning the service they're getting. A contaminated water source in Flint, Michigan caused dirty water to enter people's homes. And as Jackson Bruner tells us, the process in Grand Rapids should give locals nothing to worry about. When it comes to a contaminant like lead in drinking water, Grand Rapids has some good numbers. 2014 Minnesota Department of Health data says almost 4 milligrams per liter were found in the city's water. That's double the amount from five years before then, but far below the state's health limit of 15. We're on a, what's called a reduced monitoring schedule because over the period of time we've demonstrated that lead and copper is not an issue here for the Grand Rapids uh, drinking water. How does water here stay so clean? Well, Grand Rapids puts all of it through a complex cleaning process at its treatment facility. It comes in from the corner of our uh, building here, from our wells, and we have an aerator that aerates the water. A sand filter separates out the rest of the metals, beginning the home stretch of the cleaning process. We soften our water, which are these softeners right here. And we soften about 50% of our water. Minnesota requires a small amount of fluoride in state drinking water. In Grand Rapids, it's added as the final step. The state standard right now is 0 0.70, so we have to keep the between those standards. At the end of the process, water has moved from a dirty state to this clear one. It's now ready for drinking and can be sent directly to the public. In Grand Rapids, Jackson Bruner, Lakeland News. Problems in Flint stemmed from the city switching from a lake to a contaminated river as its water source. Doyle says a similar problem is unlikely to happen in Minnesota because changing water would have to first be approved by the State Department of Health. If you've enjoyed this segment of Lakeland News, please consider making a tax-deductible contribution to Lakeland Public Television.